In today's video, we are trying out a new idea from you. Can we cook steak in a vacuum and is it a good idea? Not too long ago, we had a video where we cooked things in a vacuum pot. We, we took this cooking pot, we added a seal onto it, and we sucked all the air out for cooking stuff. A lot of you said you wanted to see us cook steak in the same way, and it doesn't take a whole lot to convince us to try cooking steak some we way. We will always take the steak suggestions, you guys. So, we're, uh, that's what we're gonna do. We've got our pot again, and we've got a non-vacuum chamber cooking service as well. We've got two very similar ribeye steaks here, and we're gonna try cooking them. We're gonna try cooking them both on the stove, pan frying, but one of them is going to be in our vacuum chamber. We're going to try and pull a vacuum before we even start heating it up. And the tricky part is we want to suspend the steak in the vacuum, but not in the oil while it heats up, because we want to put it in hot. That's yep. how you, you don't put it in a cold pan. You don't let it heat up with the oil. The oil's supposed to be hot before the meat is lowered into it. Yeah. So we had to come up with a way of how to lower it in after while still having a vacuum, and it's a solution we've used for a few things in the past. Basically, we're just gonna have two loops of string. This is cotton string, butcher's twine. It's actually just meant to go around your food as you cook it. But then we're just gonna have two loops held up with magnets to the lid. And hopefully those will hold our steak through the whole vacuuming process. And then once it's hot, we'll be able to pull the magnets off or at least move them and the steak will fall down into the oil. Flipping it is a different trick. I think that's just gonna involve grabbing the, shaking. the- Yeah, the pot and the vacuum lid at the same time and just like, yeah, tossing let's, it around let's, and- Let's maybe only do that with the lid. It's, yeah. It does have oil in it yeah. right now and he's just shaking it, so. But right now the oil is very thin and cold so it doesn't really come out of the pot very well. Then we'll cook both steaks mm -hmm. and hopefully they'll be good. We'll see what happens. I'm, I'm interested to see what happens to the steak before yep. and as we are cooking it because just the vacuum might do something to it. Like I bet we start seeing water bubbling on the surface yep. and then if we leave it in the vacuum as it heats up that water might just dissipate it might boil away and dry off good okay. news it works so it's holding and then the idea is just kind of i just sort of slid mine yep i that just one, wiggled mine that one actually it fell the Ow. string fell off the steak but either way it works that's and, fine and we didn't cook the magnets like you were worried about so perfect so far so Beautiful. good it's the best string magnet suspended steak I think I ever have seen. In a vacuum. The two are not going to heat up at exactly the same speed because, well, the vacuum might do something, but also it's a different burner, it's a different pan. We're just gonna try for about the same. Well, let, I say let's turn on the vacuum. All right, ready? Ready. There we okay, go. Okay. Took a second. All right, so let's see if the surface of the steak does anything interesting. Uh, so at a pretty close to a vacuum, not much is happening. Yeah, interesting. I really did think we were going to see some bubbling on the surface. Mm -hmm. So our oil is bubbling a little bit, which okay. normally does not happen when you're just heating it up to fry stuff in it. Like no, that's... but water boils in a vacuum too. Yeah. Oil doesn't usually bubble when it's frying, like until you're at like a way, way higher temperature. A worthy, a worthy temperature. Um, that's probably good. Yep. Starting Let's, to just color. I'll, I'll a test this one. See what happens when I drop our steak in. As it should. Good, good sizzle. All right. Okay, now I'm actually going to turn that heat up because it's going to be losing a lot into the steak. Leave that for a bit. So yeah, try yep. just like uh, tipping it, yep, sideways, sort, of, sort of, slide it. Yep. Let go, let go. Woo! It has stayed bent. It has a little but bit. It is, but it is sizzling you know and popping too. Flatten out, flatten out. Our string that I had tied around to try and keep it flat is doing the opposite because it slipped off a little bit hanging. Yep. Now it's holding it a little bit curved. What are you gonna do? Steak in a vacuum, it's an experiment. All right, I'm just gonna see how this one's doing on the side it's doing. Oh, we're getting a beautiful crust forming. I am loving that. I'm gonna flip this one, All and right. then I, I think we should try flipping that one. I don't know how it's gonna do. Sure. That is looking good. Now, I'm not usually a big fan of fried steak, but it really does smell nice in here. Yeah, pan fried isn't my favorite, but I don't know how to do uh, a barbecue grill in a vacuum yet, so. Yeah, someday All right. maybe. Now we, we get interesting with this. Go for it. Go for it, go for it, go for it again, go for it again. 
Oh, I, yes. Yeah, you got yes, it. You got it. I got it. it. It looks kind of fried okay. a little bit. Now we just have oil splattered all over the roof of our, or our oh, piece of Oh, everywhere. Acrylic. It's everywhere. So we're not going to have nearly as clear of a view, but he did turn it, and you can see that there is a crust forming on that as well. A little bit of that same golden brown orange color Good that sign. we do want. Maybe I can use the, the magnet to clear it out a little bit. Oh my goodness. Ooh, I scratched it up more. That worked great. <laughs> it kind of got some of the oil out of the way, though. So yeah, our tube is filling up with... It was down here. Yep. And now it's gone up to there from steam and maybe shaking. And maybe our vacuum is just struggling because we are not taking as good care of it as we should. On this one, we're gonna, I'm going to take this off. That's how long it's been in this one. I say we kill it, call it on that one. Okay. And let's see what happens when we let all of our pressure back in. Hot oil. Ooh, I just watched the steak shrink a little bit. Bef yeah, it, it like eh, nice. collapsed in on itself a little bit. And then it filled with so much steam that I could no longer make out anything that was happening in there. To be fair, uh, first first thought is, first look, looks like a it it looks like steak. fried steak, yeah. Now I have to say, I am not very experienced cooking steaks on a stove top in a pan. So I hope you'll forgive me if these are not cooked correctly. They may be like well done all the way through or blue rare on the inside. I don't know where on that scale they'll be. Let's test our control first. I'm just gonna, this is like the, the biggest solid bit of meat. So I'm just gonna slice this open and see how it's looking. I, I do think most steak experts would say this is a bit overcooked. We're looking somewhere between a medium and a medium well here. There's a little bit of pink left, not as much as I would have liked. This is the one that was in the vacuum. It looks cooked. Much more yeah. rare. Much more. This right here in the middle is in fact still rare. Over here, we've kind of got a gradient from... It's not even warm. Is it really cool? Yeah, I'd say that's probably around 100 degrees, which is not cooked <laughs> for meat. Which is fine. Like, if you like it rare or blue rare. That is blue rare, technically, if it's also But then, like, the we outside. do have over here, that's like medium well to well done over on this side. So we've got like a gradient going across from not cooked to overcooked. Could have been how the bend was, too. It is very true. It did curl up quite a bit, and so that could affect it. Steak cooked in a frying pan with oil. It's steak. It's good. Mm -hmm. That was good. And I really was, enjoyed yeah. that. It was steak. And now we're going to try the stuff that was cooked in the vacuum and see if there's a difference. Yep. I mean, it's cooler. That's for flavor. That's not cooked. So, guys, I have eaten raw steak in the past. Steak tartare, that is something that you can do. That is completely safe to eat. So long as the outside of your steak is cooked, you're pretty good. Point is, the steak that I'm eating right now is safe to eat the way I'm eating it. However, that is, and if you handed well, okay. this to anybody, this. yes, this. this is raw. Look at this piece where I'm just cutting into it now. Look at that. That's not even like the red color. That's that like the purple was... color. So if you like your steak, barely dead. That one could still be breathing and probably be okay. Yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking that maybe high-end restaurants where people want that kind of steak, maybe you should look into this because... I mean, yes, that's actually... That's got a great sear on the outside. That is a perfect blue rare right there. Great sear on the outside, like nothing on the inside. This piece, this is closer to well done. This is at least as much But you had to chop through the whole steak to find that. It was just like on one little edge piece, so. I honestly feel it does taste different somehow. Yeah, there's not as much flavor. Maybe the Maillard reaction. I'm saying Maillard reaction. <laughs> That's spelt Maillard reaction. That's the process by which heat caramelizes sugars, including like the, the sugars and proteins that are in the surface of a steak. It's what turns it brown, golden, crispy, and has that really extra concentrated steak flavor. It's something you definitely want on a steak. Um, it's delicious. It's why one of the reasons, along with texture, that people like a good crust on the outside of their steak. I'm wondering if the low pressure changes the temperature at which that occurs or changes how it occurs. So maybe it's looking like it reacted, it but the taste is not the same. It's not a huge difference. It's not like this one's good and that one's bad. It's just that this one does taste a little bit stronger. But if you really like the 
the blue rare with the crunchy outside, it's still there, you still got it. So you can cook steak in a vacuum. I really thought that there was gonna be like bubbling on the surface of it. I thought we'd see surface water boiling off. I thought it was going off. to char. As soon as the vacuum uh, was turned off, I thought the air was gonna rush back in and just like with our candies and stuff, I thought it was just going to like burn the outside of our steak. I think we did get a little bit of that because remember right it as I opened shrink. it, we, and then it's filled with smoke. Mm -hmm. So I think that we did have the heat high enough that it was able to be burning, except there was no air in there. Yep. And then, yeah, the shrinking, it happened very quickly, but the steak did just kind of like And I think with some experimentation, this could be fantastic. So if you guys have any other ideas of other things that you want to see cooked in a vacuum on the stove, we can do that. Let us know in the comments below. Guys, that's not all you know. We've always got more for you to see. Hit that box up at the top to check out our most recent video, and we will see you in the next one. Talk to you then.